Okay. Just putting that out there for the record. Uh, I guess we can get going underway. Um, we have two sets of, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, two sets of, uh, what am I looking for? I'm losing my word, minutes. Jerry. Talk. Minutes. Thank you. Two things of minutes. I wanted to call them notes and I knew that was wrong. Uh, <laughs> long day on the side of the hill today. Sorry. Still trying to find my feet. Uh, two sets, two sets of minutes um, that we have to approve today. Uh, the dates. Uh, I want to set the first one. Jerry, are you comfortable with the minutes you got with the first date? Uh, yeah, yeah, I updated them minorly, like okay. putting the correct date on them, for example. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, can we just can we just approve them both at the same time? Is that cool? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Hey, hello, John. Thanks for joining us, John. Welcome. Um, so let it, again, if we want to approve the minutes. Yep. Have a, a vote to approve. I'll make a motion. Make a motion. To approve to approve. both. Yep. Any right. second? S second. Okay. I can second it. That's fine. Okay. What great. dates? What dates are they? The 14th and 19th. Okay. Uh, those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Some of us. <laughs> Even the Any of those that are opposed? Yeah, I was going to say. Abstain. Any of those opposed to the minutes? Or? I think Robert okay, and many questions? Have through the whole thing. So if you guys approve them. Um, appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to say uh, I'm, I abstain if you can hear me. I've got you, Joe. Thank you. I haven't had a chance to read the second set, so if you're going to do them separately, I'm going. I'm just going to abstain on it. Okay. Uh, and then I, Robert and John are both muted. Well, I'll give that an eye. Sorry, I thought I, I didn't oh, mind. There you go. John, can you unmute to John a vote? Is he there? Well, we have a we have a quorum. We have enough, right? Yeah. You looking for me again? No, we're looking nope. for John. Just looking okay. for John because he is here. Some type of vote from him. But, all right. Well, like you said, we have a quorum. We put him down as stained. Um, all right, I guess the minutes are approved. Um, I guess, again, I didn't put out an agenda tonight. Sorry, I, I haven't been around my computer for two days. Um, but I did want to go back to the fields. Uh, I know that, like I said, I, I warned Mike a little bit right before when he got here that I was going to throw it at him. Um, and that we would talk about the field project or because he's got history on it and was going to talk about it and into it. That sound good, Mike? Sounds good to me. All right, ma'am. It's all you. Okay. All right. Uh, it's category 2630-430. And we asked some questions and we received some answers to it. And it came back that it looks like there's $3,000 for materials for the field. $20,000 for contracted company to apply them. That's what we got for a response. I tried to make sense of everything. Went back through a couple of years ago on the proposals of the work that was going to be done. And it appears that this time here, the $23,000 is basically for top dressing of the fields. And that's just... Um, adding compost basically for far as I can tell to get the nutrients up because the backfield is very thin it said in some notes that I found from several years of playing with this. Um, I'd like to, I think that I'd like to make a recommendation that um, somebody looks into it a little bit further and finds out how much materials needed to do it and if it can be done in house, it's nothing. We own a tractor now. Um, we got a, I guess we got a new salt spreader. You can use that 
or you can use a hire somebody in town that's got a salt sand spreader that goes in the back of a pickup. There's multiple ways of applying this. There's no, this isn't rocket science here. Um, it's pretty simple. Twenty thousand dollars to hire somebody to go out there and I do did it. it by hand. Yeah, well, I'm getting to that, Joe. Um, we've kind of put opposition up to this every time. Joe had some pictures back when he did it by hand. And I don't know if you still have those pictures you could share sometime, Joe, but the fields huh. look great. And um, what happened was two years ago, we approved the, the estimates to do some work to both fields. And the estimates was $19,292.50. Um, when we asked, when I asked for the um, actual invoices for the work that got done, they overspent it by $5,703.50. And I understand, you know, you all, you have a little bit of overruns from estimates, you know, kind of know a little bit about that. But, um, you know, that's 20 something percent. And a lot of the work is work that should have been done in house. Um, and that's where I have a problem. Because what happens, a couple things. Um, somebody threw it out there a couple of weeks ago when we were talking, well, we had a dry year last year. Yes, we did. Um, we're going to have many more dry years. But that's, you can't throw a lot of good money at a field and not maintain it all the time. It, it, is, it isn't a matter of just throwing fertilizer on it once and walking away. You've got to maintain it all the time. And that part of that maintenance is watering it. The rec department several years ago when we built the new field out back, part of that project, they bought a water cannon. A water cannon is a large sprinkler, basically what it is. You hook it to a fire hydrant and it applies water rapidly and you know you get your moisture into your grass. Well, last year we had a drought. Not once did they use it. Um, I went a little further. I talked to Nate Hadaway at the town and asked him if anybody came and asked to use the water. He said, absolutely not. Um, he would have been more than happy to let him use the water until late fall, probably. He said a group came and saw him, but they were adult, an adult baseball team or softball team. He wasn't sure and just asked him if he could help them. And he said he did. He watered the fields for like a week, he said, and then none of them people came forward and wanted to give him a hand. So, you know, it's not the town's responsibility to take care of the school lawn. So he stopped. But he said nobody from the school ever approached him about using water. He said it wouldn't have been a problem. The second thing is every year they go out there and, you know, we did it once. We put all this money into the field and what they do, they turn around, they go out there and this late winter plow the snow into piles so you can make snow sculptures i understand why you do that but when you just put 20 grand into your fields and now you're taking the snow and piling it up you're risking winter kill because i don't know if any of you you know some of you must have lawns at home we have a winter where we don't we have ice not a lot of snow you get winter kill so you got to decide what you want either you know you want to use the fields for you know, making snow sculptures and running on them in the winter when you shouldn't, or, you know, you want to have good grass. Those are just a couple of reasons um, that I can't support it. I think that the whoever powers need to be need to go and get a price on or get an estimate of how many uh, yards of material they need, get a price on it, and come back to us by next week and tell us this is what we need to do it in-house. Um, that's where I am with that. Anybody like to ask some questions? Now, I think that was brought up last week uh, to get a quote of what it would cost to do. Um, I, they do it by so, pounds per square. So it's go ahead, dude. Go ahead. I just wanted to. to um, review what the process was. That, that particular fields and landscape was uh, a redo on the fields. And that has been in the master plan for quite a few years, uh, a few years back since I've been here. And it's something that the district has, has always spoken about. They did go out and get prices. They did go out and for, with companies that have done other 
North Country um, grass areas and fields, uh, sports fields uh, with the other schools. And they were visited and they looked at them and, and we had pictures of them. And, and that was how they um, determined the amount of money. So the process was followed as, as far as that goes. This is also was a project the uh, school board began a few years ago and, and the board moved uh, voted to move forward with it. So the, the, you know, in order to get the prices, we do get the prices early in some cases. So by the time we're ready to do it, uh, their prices could be up a little bit uh, in some cases, but um, the bottom line is that something that, that again was on the master plan, the board, it was a project the board had, had in, wanted to invest in and some community members had presented to the board that they were interested in concerned that the, the um, fields were not up to par. So it was years ago. So this is why this was put into play. The redo though, Judith, meant an actual redo, scraping the loam, what is the loam, especially the backfield. There is nothing there. That was built back in the 60s. Um, and that was what that project consisted of, actually a redo, taking it down, replacing it, and doing it right, not just putting top dressing on it. Um, we're not comparing apples to apples here. Um, the front field, I was involved in that several years ago when the front field was redone. I was actually there physically doing it. And it was a limited budget, um, did the best everybody could do with the money that was available. Um, nothing contributed by the towns either. And you're trying to make chicken soup out of chicken shit is what we're trying to do here because there is no topsoil there to speak of. Um, you're putting the top dressing on to get nutrients back into the soil, but there is nothing there. Um, so, um, as far as being in the master plan, probably there was something. There's a lot of stuff in that master plan that <laughs> don't get done, but um, that redo was an actual redo. And that would have been um, lots of money. And there's no reason why we can't get a price on the materials and, and, and have it done in-house, apply it. Is there, I mean, is there a full-time fields person in-house? I'm not aware, I don't know, so. No, you have your facilities director and you have, and you have other um, custodial staff, but they're usually working on summer projects throughout the two schools. And, and the reason why this hasn't been done for a while, when I came in, they, they were, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't, it's very time consuming. And so to actually get the project done in place. The upkeep is a little bit less time, but to get a solid uh, base uh, takes time. And, and that was something that, you know, was always told to me that there wasn't enough time for that. So um, that's why we, the board went down the road of getting a contractor to come in, look at the shape of the field and give the recommendations at, at his, with using his expertise and um, determining what needs the field needed. Is this for all fields to be done at the same time? Um, right now, they were working on the front field. Yeah, it was, it was for the front field and the front softball field and the back baseball oh, field. Back field, okay. So the and, and what's the time the time problem because of use? I mean, the back the back soccer field is not used at all in the summer. I don't believe, or it's not really scheduled to be used now. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that wasn't the fact that they were being used. It was the fact that, well, obviously you had to work around the sports schedules, but um, it was the time in which it took to to do the actual project. So you, are you talking about staff time, the amount of hours? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, back when we did it by hand, I can understand that, but we had to do it now. But I think a lot of the grumblings that I was hearing around were the fact that we put this money into it and then it wasn't maintained. I, that, was, that was one of the big grumbles, they let it burn. Well, well, this past year, nothing was done with it because it was taken out of the budget. Yeah, but we still have 
all that money invested in before and they still let it burn. That was that was the issue. Well, I'm not gonna argue. I, no, I know. I'm just this I, yeah, I mean that, that. any field any field you have, have to, if you want to maintain fields at all, you have to water them. Someone has to get out there all the time. Yeah. If you want to keep them nice and you have to mow them. So um, but My Mike, do we need to get prices on um, some of these other things like whatever the conditioner is and some of these other um, treatment, um, you know, chemicals or whatever they are? Do we need to, to not only get prices for the yards of material, but for the uh, conditioners or treatments or whatever? No, I don't. I don't think it's up to us to, to have to do anything, Bonnie. Um, yeah. they, in their justification to us, they said mainly dressing the back field. That was the justification we got on the questions that we asked on January 11th. It says yeah. right here, this is for yeah. two fields, mainly dressing the back field. And then you go through some notes and it talks about um, this, how thin the topsoil is out there. That, that's nothing new. Everybody, you know, that's been known since 1963 when they built the damn thing. Um, you go out, you know, to do it right, it's all gonna come off and be redone, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, mm -hmm. They're trying to put um, a top dressing on it so it helps establish a growth, gets the nutrients back in. Um, and it says right here, $3,000 is materials and $20,000 is for a contracted company. I read that as this $3,000 worth of materials yep. and $20,000 to have them come put it down. We, this is, you know, we should be talking amongst the budget committee. This, I'm justifying, I ain't going to argue with the administration over things that they, I don't feel they know about as far as the history of it. And I don't want to get into argument about it because I, I just don't feel that I'm arguing with anybody that knows anything about it. I'm telling you what I, you know, goes on. Right. Um, obviously there was no water. I did my due diligence. I asked the town that somebody threw it out there. Well, maybe they didn't let us. Town told me absolutely not. Nobody ever came to use it. I haven't seen that water can and used in three or four years. Um, and why? Because it takes effort to do it, I think. Um, we invested $25,000 two years ago to get these fields up. Everybody said how good they looked the first year. And then last year, they walked away from it. If any of you, I got a picture I took last summer. The infield on the softball field down front had enough grass growing through it, you could have mowed it. Because they bought a drag. All you had to do was go out there and drag it once a week and keep the growth down. Um, didn't happen. Um, you know, it's just a lack of maintenance, Bonnie. Yeah, I I agree. And if you if you if you want to make a motion as to an appropriate amount of money, or wait until next week until they they come back with the price of the yards of material. I mean, I I, I, I think we should wait till that. next week. They should go out, come back to us with something. Um, there's two point two acres out there, according to them. Um, it's Pretty simple, but I don't feel that I should be doing that work for him. Um, uh, Deb, what is the um the amount of money that the the, the um, information that we gave to the budget committee is that what was going into the budget? Is that the explanation that's going into this budget, or was that the previous year? This budget you gave it to us. We gave them the from estimates the from the initial the initial yes. estimates, and then we gave them the, then the next time they asked us for um, what we actually spent. So that's what we've given them so far, but we can get those all bro broken down. Yeah. Uh, broken down. Hold on, Bon. What do you mean broken down, Debbie? You just you asked for us. That? You just asked us to get you the cost of the materials, so we can get you that. To do what needs to be done. Right. Okay. Yep. yep. You asked what so, is the cost of the materials so versus the labor. But I. Okay. Being done in house, I'm saying though, because you already gave it to me an explanation that there's three thousand dollars in materials and twenty thousand for the contracted. I would assume that's what you got from your. Um, yep. It's not in the original estimates that we have because it was thirteen thousand dollars on a bi annual uh, maintenance agreement that Bi-yearly. So, with the paperwork. Bi-yearly, meaning it, twice a year. Bi-yearly, every other year. No, no. bi-yearly means twice a year. Biannual is every other year. It was yeah. in the fall and the spring.
So I, it was done in the fall and the spring one year. Right. Once the fields were set, the 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 initial and I have to, I I don't have it in front of me. The initial information we had was there was an estimate one and an estimate two to do the infields and the outfields of the two fields. I think that's how it was set up. And then there was another. The third estimate was the by yearly estimate for maintaining them going forward. So our, our expectation was for them to do it and maintain it. So we don't do any maintenance. That was the initial estimates that we received. I mean, that, when to they me, first, that would be when why they first laid out I, the project. Yeah. And they didn't get that far? Well, How far did, did they get? They only did the first year's work. Um, but we'll, we'll get you the breakdown okay. of the materials that's in those pieces. And the pieces you sent were what was spent, and what the initial contract was? I think we gave you the initial estimate for yep. the, the fields, the front, the infield and outfield of both fields, and then that bi yearly upkeep. And then and, we gave ahead, you what sorry. was actually spent in that first year. And then what was the number that's in the budget this time? Is, there, is that an estimate or are we just using the old numbers? Yeah, we have an estimate for that also. But we haven't seen I that think, estimate. We just have that um, number. I don't know if we gave you that or not. I don't know if that's 23,000. You gave us in writing twenty three thousand dollars. Yeah, did we? I don't know if we gave you the breakdown. I think that's what you're no, looking for. No, three thousand for materials, twenty for contracted labor. Okay, we gave you that. Okay. Yes, you did. Okay, so just one last clarification question for me, Joe. In the past, you have done this particular service yourself by hand in house successfully, no major issues, right? And now that you know that there's even more heavy equipment to be able to accomplish this, you find that to be feasible, right? Just your opinion from having been in that position. By opinion, it's absolutely feasible. The, uh, we ordered, UNH used to do our soil samples. It costs like 20 bucks to mail them in. You mail them in, they'll send you a pamphlet of what you need to put on per square. And I used to order it through Vermont, some, some stuff through Vermont, and then you just go out and spread it. But I do agree with the first part of the contract as far as getting the compost and getting everything up to, up to grade. I, I do agree with that because the fields were hurting nutrient wise and everything, and it was hard to get it there. I have no problem with the first part of it, but as far as maintaining, and I, I absolutely believe it's in our capability to, uh, we got to save some money some something that we can do to save some money. And that, and that quote, I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't go through it. I skimmed over it. Um, that quote was just to, that quote was to bring it back to grade. Is that what you're saying, Joe? No, I believe the original quote, the okay. first year project, the first part that we already did, I believe was to bring it up to par, but I, I don't have it in front of me either. And I, that, haven't, I haven't read it for a while. And that's where I'm going. We're already at grade, right? I mean, they're graded and everything. Now it's just maintenance. Now it's just top, top soil, seed, spread. I mean, that's all I did with soccer field forever. Yeah, the town will come I mean, in I'm and not aerate an expert. for nothing. They'll, it, the town comes in no, and the, aerates for nothing because they have, they have to do the back community field anyway, so they're already there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot about aeration. They have one of those rollers. That's great. Um, plug hmm. rollers. So just, yeah, plug just rollers. as a clarification, uh, uh, the budget committee is thinking that uh, the people, Kevin and, and his staff, um, probably have enough um, uh, capability and time to be able to manage this if if uh, we provide the supplies for this. Is that where the work would be done? Is that group? We have uh, uh, what uh, five people under operations of the of the buildings right now. 
probably full-time staff. <clears throat> well, my assumption is, is going to be that, that if that was requested for the budget, then we'll just take time out from another project to, in order to get this project done, so. Just prioritize it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's I, I, that's exactly how I hear it and feel about it, Jerry. If that's what you're asking, I agree. Yes. Thanks. So we we would like to have. I mean, it seems like we have the amount for materials, Mike. Didn't you say it was three thousand dollars for materials? I'm just telling so guess, you what yeah. what was given back to us on. On January 11th, when we asked the question, yeah. okay, it's in that response. Yeah. You guys all have it. The response yeah. was that um, the money, the 23000 is for two fields, mainly dressing the back field. Includes the upkeep on the infield. $3,000 is materials, and 20000 is for a contracted company. So... Um, the last time the estimates, it was only one time that actually people said something about estimates. That was in 2018 before any work was ever done. And it was an estimate, you know, then the work got done. And then there was supposed to be 13,000 bi yearly, I guess. I thought it was bi annually, but say bi yearly doesn't matter um, to maintain everything. But at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're adding top dressing, and they, and they say, mainly the backfield. Um, there is no topsoil out there. You're not gonna make topsoil out of top dressing. It just, it don't work that way, I'm sorry. Um, these fields were built back in 63, limited funds. If any of you know, Lincoln Woodstock isn't really known for a farming community and there's no topsoil around here. I've dug as much topsoil around here as anybody and you're not gonna find good topsoil in town. And when that fields were built, that's, was just material on site. I built the fields next to it, um, I don't know, 10 years ago, the new fields or whatever they want to call them, um, right next to them. This, it's wood stir, it's not topsoil. Um, so you got the same problem. Yeah, the back field was built, but from the deer, from the deer park, they, they hauled the sand from the deer park pit. Remember the Army Corps, Army of, Engineers? Corps of Engineers? So did that work because they did connect the road. That's yeah. right, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, if we're going to throw $20,000 a year at these fields or 23000 whatever it is, thinking you're going to bring them back, somebody needs to rethink the plan, bite the bullet, if that's what you think you need, um, professional playing fields. Um, again, it's wants versus needs here. Um, those fields have been there since 63. They've served the community well. Um, we've all played on them, um, uh, comes down to wants and needs here, people. Um, I don't see how we're doing them a disservice, the, 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 the children in our community a disservice. We built a new field right next door there. There's one, two, what is it? Four fields in town that they got to play on. There's plenty of play space. Um, you know, it, you, you got to think about the budget at some point, and um, I just have a hard time with that. That's all. I'm having a hard time with twenty thousand of contract. What's the expectation of that twenty thousand? Um, well, I think we ought to just. Are they there? I, mean, every, every, I think we've you know, probably talked it over. Every, we've made it clear that we want the administration to come back with something for us, and let's leave it at that. And we'll discuss yep. it again when they come back. All right. I, I agree. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going down through all these sheets I got here, and I I see an item of infield material, 2200. Probably. Well, that, that, Bonnie, that, that was, I don't know if you're looking at the estimate or the actual invoices that they paid. Okay. Now, I'm looking at the... Um, Ah, I've got both. Here's the invoices they paid. All right. But at any rate, the 3000 has got to be 
new material 2180. Well, let's let's not assume anything. We're wasting time yeah. by trying to dissect it because yeah. I've been through it. It's not. Um, you're not going to make heads and tails of it, I don't think. Uh, oh. Let's just wait for them to come back. Um, I, I I agree. I'm I'm you know looking at this piece. Yeah, let's get that. But I I've got to believe we can do it in house, and or with the town's help. Um, I think they'd come over and help us if need be. So we're looking for. Um, I'm trying to go back to my notes real quick. Sorry. Um, the material costs and what it would cost for us to do an in house. Okay. The expectation of getting something on that information. Right. All right. Excellent. Um, all right. Like I said, I've, I've kind of threw it out there. Was there anything? Yeah. Is, well, I, I have well, some things, but go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Um, I'm in the well, I'm on a in the mood here, I guess. Good. Um, that same category, they got ten thousand dollars for tree removal in there. Oh, thank and you. And then they gave us some. There was a blurb somewhere that all oh, the last tree they took down was fourteen hundred dollars. Well, you can have not every tree costs fourteen hundred dollars to take down. Maybe it was crane service. Who knows? Um, I remember watching last year's um, meetings and school board meetings and there was community members um, that were coming forward with questions about dangerous trees on the site on the property never got addressed um, they were safety issues and they had come multiple times then they finally addressed a couple now this year there's ten thousand dollars in there i'd like to know if there's a did they get an actual estimate for this or is this somebody just pulling a number out of the out of the air. Last time we actually had a real tree service come and do some work, it was $5,500 because I was on the board and part of it. Um, again, I think this is just a number that was arbitrarily pulled out of the air. I'd like to, you know, did a couple different tree companies come in, look at the actual trees, give us a price. If not, have them come and do it. Give us a price. I mean, I, I I just don't understand how these numbers come around sometimes. Well, you know, the thing is, is that we, we don't go out to bid until after March. So we have a, a company come that we've used in the past and has done a good job for the, for the district and comes in, looks at different projects, gives an estimate about what the projects would cost. All projects aren't going to cost the same. And you never know what time what you may be running into as far as any other um, impacts that the tree coming down may have. So we rounded it to 10,000 because we don't know if we're gonna to have to take down, you know, those are the number of trees that had to be taken down based on, you know, approximate numbers. We won't be going out to bid until after March. Why you just said you've got a quote from them. So share the quote with us. I don't, I said they, get, they came and they looked at it and they said, this is, we based it on what, what happened last year with the price of taking trees down. So in looking at the number of trees that need to come down, that's an approx, it's a budget. It's an approximate number. It's a guess. That's right. Okay, then Mike's justified what he's saying. A guess can be lower too. Why can't you have? I think, I think Mike's qualifications for knowledge in this area is, is far better than the majority of people in in the state so i'll go with mike's thought on that why can't why can't this go out to bid before march what's the what's yeah. the harm in that we're looking at it with every project we do roofing right. flooring right. heating everything we do it's a guesstimate put it out to bid have your scope of work put it out to bid we have done this in a few years ago we did do this on things before we came to budget season so we had actual numbers to tell the taxpayers not these goddamn estimates and guesstimates is all they are and there's no reason that couldn't have real estimates done and then if the project gets funded the, it gets awarded and that's how the scope of work is written it's based on funding i would i would think this time of year that they would be able to come out and do some estimates also i know that maybe with the snow there's a little bit of overhang 
but I know a few guys that I work with on my second job that actually work for tree cutters and they're not working right now. So they're working a second job. So I would assume they, they're looking to get bids and get planned for the spring. I, I well, just I, I don't get, know that industry real well, but. I, I know the industry real well, Tucker. I'm, I'm personal friends with most of the tree companies in this area. They'll come out you would. July, August, 12 months a year. Okay. Right. Yeah. You just got to have a scope of work, reach out to them, and they'll all come out. Um, this, again, uh, I ain't going to argue with people you, about it. You actually, that's all it is. It's, it's just excuses, and that's all we ever hear. Um, I'm going to get wound actually, up. And, Mike, I know. Mike, you actually. We're doing something new. Words out of my mouth not being the rubber stamp that the past has been, and that's going to shatter the whole lot of people's worlds. Well, in general, um, you have to get an estimate. I mean, anybody has to get an estimate. And, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because then you, you've got this estimate. And so contractors uh, uh, know you've gotten these estimates and put that amount of money in the budget. You know, and, and so of course they're going to. They know you. You have eighteen thousand to spend, so of course the bids are going to come in. But that's the way it is. Um, to develop a budget, you need to get two or three estimates for whatever it is of any consequence. Some some uh, places have, well, any project less than five thousand. We'll guess a bit, but um, any project of a certain size, you need an estimate. So. You need one, even though it kind of gives uh, the guys that are going to bid on it later a rough idea of what kind of money you've got to spend. But you have to get estimates. So how do you build a budget? Well, with the estimates, I will get more detail. I'm sorry. What, what was that? I said with the estimates, Judy, I will get I more details. It. I'm assuming that's what you're okay, asking so you're gonna for, get some... to get more detail. So yeah, I... if you're going to get some estimates. Yep, well, you're going to get some what... estimates. That would be great. For what you have described as work, it's simply a look at the site for safety purposes and they determine what needs to be done to meet those safety criteria. So you don't have to spell out a whole lot here to get an estimate on this. This is a pretty straightforward, very easy thing to do. It should have been done when you guys all got together and did your budget instead of coming up with the imaginary number. So when you put a number together, you, yeah, don't shake your head, Judith. That's how you do it in real life. I know how to do it. Well, you didn't. So please do. I did do it. You just didn't. You just said you I didn't. Think. Where are these trees anyway? I, I mean, are they in that island uh, in the middle as you drive around? Are they uh, on the walkway? trying to go out to the field or where are the they're, th they're throughout the whole property there they actually have them on the walking fields out in the woods where the kids use out in the woods okay. they're behind the back stops at the baseball fields out back they're pretty where but i bought it Some of them have been there dangerously for a couple of years now. So the fact that we couldn't get numbers on them by now, uh, I don't know. I have a little trouble with that. But Joe, I would have, I would have, and, and Mike, I would assume they would prioritize the different trees too, so that in the estimate, if there were fifty trees, twenty-five at a severely dangerous or something like that. I mean. Uh, well, I mean, some of them come down by storm, so there's no way to predict right. them, but. You know, there's no, no, no way it would be impossible for any staff to do that. But, but yes, no, but, some of them should but, be prioritized but, to severely dangerous widow makers. Which, yeah, which again would allow us to have a better idea on, okay, we need to take down 20 opposed to 75 or something like that. Um, just kind of thinking, all right. And I'm wondering if we have to get a permit to take the trees down, you know, it, if you're over a certain, no, they're on most of they're they're on our property, but okay. I don't know. I think the last time we had all those trees down, I think a lot of neighboring houses took came out and cut them for you and took them in for firewood. But anyways, 
because I don't live far from this area, and I, I, I walk quite often. Mr. Baker did a really good job of that. Yes, that's what he used to do. <laughs> I know. I, and bring them. I wood think off a few people. <laughs> I think, few, I think a few did the last time too, because I, I saw a few disappear and anyways, that's whatever. Um, all right, um, so we've got an estimate co hopefully coming from a tree service coming in, they're reaching out and taking care of that. Uh, and again, we have a breakdown of the costs of, I'm just kind of going over questions and stuff that, or stuff that I know Jerry's writing down also. Um, those two. for doing the fields in house. Yeah, now Jerry, you had something you wanted to bring up, I think. Yeah, I have a couple of things. It'll probably take a little bit. Uh, for, first, I want to backtrack a little bit on the teacher pay. I have a follow-up question um, about the pay increases. Um, you mentioned uh, in there that the um, uh, this is a two-year um, uh, the, the discussion with the teachers union covers for two years. Um, and do, I, do I have that right, Judith? Uh, so is the pay increase for two years or is it per year that's in the sheet? Per year. So the so $2,300 per year will be the pay increase. Is that per teacher, basically? Is that Correct. So it's a two year deal. Two-year contract. Okay, I just didn't know if they. Yep. The and we gave you the salary have. schedules. Yeah, and it's twenty-three hundred. Yeah, I have the salary schedules, and then it says the change is twenty-three hundred dollars. Actually, it's two thousand. Was it uh, last year? Which one are you looking at? Well, I'm, I'm in the I'm in the, the tab saying salary. Okay, uh, that was last year's, but we gave you the new year's. What's in the binder was because we didn't have the new year new agreement at oh, the time. Okay. So, so right. then we gave you the new agreement and it was two thousand. So it's two thousand this year. Okay. So um well two, and so two thousand times roughly forty six teachers is about a ninety two thousand dollar increase in salaries. And that, that is in the budget, right? For nope. This year. nope. That's a separate warrant article. So it'd be a separate Warren article for 92 plus the 65% overhead on top of that or not? Yeah, we gave you the breakdown um, in the last set of questions that you asked. Mm -hmm. So we gave you a breakdown of the, the new money that, would, that came out of that agreement. So yeah, it's not the full 65% because a big piece of that is, is, um, is health, insurance. health insurance. So it's mm -hmm. just... The money that it would be in that warrant article is the salaries, FICA, and retirement. Yeah, so I, I mean, pay increases in the three to almost five and a half percent range is pretty high in this economy in a year when we had 50% unemployment in town. That's just, and, um, and we're starting at a cost per teacher of $91,000 roughly. So that's just just my comment on that to the to the rest of the committee. So it's, um, and we're talking now about a separate Warren article to bring it up from that number, um, from uh, the, the 90 plus. This, the step increases on the, on the, uh, 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 on the, um, Charts that we had at thirteen hundred dollars per step, and um, we're doing two thousand. So for everybody, uh, including um, so more than that. So that's um, uh, so that's just just a little added comment based on you know what we what we've talked about more exhaustively about teachers in the past that we may want to think about between now and um, uh, next time. So One of my concerns is we started out talking about $8 million, but by the time we add in these things and we add in the boiler system and everything, we're really talking closer to $9 million. Well, no, it, it, with, with, all the, with all the Warren articles, it's about $8.4 million, I think. So, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this uh, teacher pay change 
uh, which you've done a great job at laying all this out, um, is um, is one of the one of the articles. Is that is that a fair representation, Debbie? Correct. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, um, what we haven't really discussed too much is other staff, and um, it's not that I have anything that bothers me or um, uh, is a concern, but you know, we talked about uh, uh, and we received information about having 30 additional staff and, um, uh, and uh, some of this is included in the original uh, kind of salary uh, information that we have. Has this also been updated, Debbie, um, the, the, the uh, staff positions? Is it did have a 2021 budget on it. Yeah, the staff, yeah. anyone that wasn't in negotiations. So just the teachers were in negotiations. So what was in your binder was for the teachers, their current salaries, not the negotiate, not the new salaries. And then everyone else was, I think it was about a two, a two and a half percent increase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so first of all, we have about uh, four special special ed teachers on the teacher side of the equation, right? Uh, and They're in the teachers union, yes. So, and so we have, it looks like out, out of what might be 30 people, 12 additional people labeled as special ed on this budget. Am I reading this correctly? The 1200 line item? Yep, that's the paras. Yeah, can you describe what a para is? Those are the, I, I think we've talked about it some, but. Um, yep, they, where'd, where'd Judy go? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they provide, Judy can explain that much better than I can, but they provide um, special ed services based on what they want a description of a paraprofessional. They provide uh, special ed services based on the IEPs, but Judy can go into that. Right, They're, they're they support the, the IEP plan um, for the student and uh, they, they work with the teacher. They don't do the actual planning, but they follow through with some of the instructional practices for mm -hmm. the student. Are, are these, um, are they generally supporting high schoolers, middle schoolers, elementary school? Uh, K through 12, depending on who the student is and, and, and what their needs are. So is 12 full-time parents? Para is a reasonable number for a school our size, or is that normal? Or, or um, um, kind of how did we come up with the number of 12? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. What happens is, is each individual student has an individual plan, and there is a team that works with that student. And they meet, and they determine what the, what the student needs, including the classroom teacher, and what the student needs in order to be able to um, move forward and make progress. So that those those decisions are made by an, each one has their own team. Each child has their own team. So I would say, yeah, in this particular case, you know, we don't have paras that are not working with students. All paras work with students in the building. So it depends. This year, there's 12. If a student moves out, you know, or a student moves in, there could be more. We also have to take on if a student moves into the district with a para from another school that team has already determined the child needs a para, we have to start that IEP with a para in our district and then we determine ourselves if, if that's needed. But it's, it's determined by a team. So how many students does one para work with? Just one or? Right, one. each para has their own student, assigned student. And, and the paras are not part of the union, not part of the- Not the teacher's union. They have, mm -hmm. uh, there's another union, support staff union. There's two unions. Okay. Uh, do they, do they, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that flows through to, um, um, to the overall budget, to Debbie's budget in terms of the spreadsheet. Um, it's not, it's not regular education. Is this under the special education yep. line? Yeah. So yeah. where we where we have about four hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars, I think, in the budget. Yep, you have teachers and paras in that line for special ed. Uh huh. Okay. 
And so they're going to have a similar, um, looks like maybe a little less, but a similar rate of, they, they're part of the retirement system uh, and um, full health insurance and everything like that. Yes. But it looks like a significantly lower rate of pay yes. than, than um, teachers, members of the teachers union. So that, um, so that's, would, would you say, Judith, that's 12 of the 30 people that you listed as being um, uh, part of the organizational staff in the school system? Um, well, you have 12, I mean support staff, as far as support staff goes, or I don't well, know. What we, we had talked about 46, roughly, I think teachers, Correct. teaching staff and 30, other staff. So you have custodians? Right. And, and, and we'll, go, we'll go through the rest, but I was just wondering, okay. is this 12 separate from the 30 or is this part of the 30? Or part of it. Part of it. Okay. Um, it, it is, uh, Tucker, is this making sense, what we're talking about as people, do people yeah. know about the salary tab in the, um, in the budget book or as well as the other sheets that have been provided? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm actually looking at it right now. The uh, I, I, what is there a special qualification for a para? Uh, the, no, not necessarily. They do have to have a, a high school diploma, and they do have to have a certification that they receive from the uh, Department of Education um, based on the level of training that they've had. So when we see somebody that's yeah, para ones and para twos, when we see somebody there and it says MS afterwards, does that mean they have a master's degree or what does an MS mean? MS is a master's degree. No, that on that chart it's middle school. Oh, middle school. Oh, right. Middle school. And, and BA is a bachelor or? Yeah, some of them have a bachelor's and they don't have the certification, but they're all working on getting the certification. Mm -hmm. But, but if they don't have it, they're. They don't all have the certification mm -hmm. at this point in time. Is, is the certification the PAII or PA? Is that the certification or any CC? Yeah, the PA, Para 1 or Para 2. Oh, I see it now. Okay, Para 2. I got it. Okay. Can you give some examples of the characteristics that would end up having a student require one of these folk? Um, a lot of it's on. Um, um, some can be, it could be behavioral support needed uh, and it has to, it usually is um, designated, designated by uh, the um, component of health and safety and medical. So if they have medical needs that have to be taken care of um, throughout the day, then, then in, a, in the doctor uh, states that there needs to be somebody with the child, then that's that's what we do. So it's medical or in its uh, safety and uh, depending on the level of uh, academic ability. So do any of these kids have a tendency towards violence? Mm, no, not necessarily. No, we don't, we don't have that. We have students who, um, who have behavioral issues, but it doesn't, safety issues. Um, you know, we sometimes we have runners you know, that will run out of the classroom or, you know, there's just different disabilities that, that, you know. Uh, internet, well, I missed a good part of that. Could you please repeat that? The internet locked up there for a second. Oh, yeah. Can you, can you In some you, cases they'll have runners, but they don't really have um, uh, significant safety concerns uh, with the Right. Students that are eligible. I say, Judy, I think you were saying he didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why, that I, was, yeah. that's why I, par I paraphrased right. you. He did a good job. Good job. <laughs> he was saying he didn't, he didn't quite get what you, what you were saying because you're going in and out a little bit tonight. Oh, okay. Um, sometimes it's academic based on the level of academics the child is, be, is able to perform at. Sometimes it's a matter of 
um, behavioral needs. Sometimes the students that are on a behavioral plan and they need someone to be with them all the time to reinforce the appropriate behaviors and support them in those appropriate behaviors. And some are uh, medical conditions. Thank you. And this is, a, and this is all on their IEP or, or uh, 504 plan? Yes. Or is it strictly These IEPs? Are IEPs. Okay. No 504s. Okay. No. I didn't think you'd need it for 504, but just checking. So are these 12 children part of the 47 that are getting special services that, that we talked about? You mean the... Um, yeah, there was 54. 54. 54. Right. You can yeah. see the ones that say NECC right now, those parents are in that program working with those students. Um, they're in the partners program or they're in? Yeah, they're working in the partners program with those students. Yes. So there should be seven of those, right? Looks like there's seven. They passed the test on that one. So yeah, I, I just said the same thing. I was like, there's seven. Yep. There's seven. Yep. All right. Okay. And um, all right. And um, uh, Debbie, the rest of the money in the regular salaries for special ed are the other four teachers that we identified before. You put them in that category instead of in the um, um, in the uh, regular education. Yes, because they're special education teachers, correct? So we have a total of 16 full-time staff dedicated to special ed. <clears throat> yeah, if you include these, it's kind of interesting. Okay, um, so that's 12. We have, uh, we have one person listed, looks like full-time guidance. Is that, that's you have two full-time guidance. And you have one social worker. He's talking about the support staff, Judy. Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. Because, yeah, we have support staff and then we have the, uh, the leadership page, right? Well, you, like she said, you have two guidance counselors that are on the teachers mm -hmm. and you have someone in support staff who's in the guidance budget also. All right. I guess um, just trying to see where where I would pull out pull out the uh, all the guidance or um, uh, what's the category of that is that twenty one twenty yeah twenty one twenty's guidance. Okay, and then we have one one support staff on that, so that's how we get our uh, one hundred and sixty one thousand in payroll for that group. Um, is is three a reasonable number of staff for guidance for the needs of the school system, and is that a reasonable salary? Is there a state mandate on what that should be? Is there a state My question was, is there a state mandate on that? Generally, you know, X number of students, the state will say X number of this position. Yeah, you do need, you do need a guidance counselor uh, at the high school and you need a guidance counselor at the elementary school. What guidance is an elementary school person uh, receiving? I'm not clear on what that role would be. Um, the elementary guidance counselor works with um, with social emotional um, needs of students. They have small groups um, that they work with. They also do uh, classroom lessons with the whole class. You can look that up, Rob. Um, yeah. I haven't looked at it in a while, but it used to read, wasn't it? Didn't it used to read that you, if you had 500 students, you had to have at least one guidance counselor? Wasn't that the threshold? Yeah, I'm not sure what it is now. It was 400 before, so. Yeah, last time I saw it, I think it was 500. So oh, okay. we, we fall well within. 
what the state guideline is. And the amount of time for doing each one of these jobs, can it be managed by one person for that number of students that we no. have? Seems within no. the- No, you have two different buildings. And they're, and they're th you have two different buildings, six through 12, and you have K through five, and um, their, their schedules are filled every year. There's, there's no, there's no- um, well, My experience with him, with the, the guidance counselor, he's got a lot of free time from what I've seen. Half the time, I don't even find him at the school when I went to find him. My experience does not support what you're saying, <clears throat> but that's just my personal experience. Okay. Um, um, well, I mean, thanks for that. So the two of the guidance, the senior guidance counselors are part of the teachers union. That's why they're on the other page and the, um, the staff is not. All right. Um, um, I guess, I guess I'll just continue to go through this speech and language. We have one, one, one full-time staff. So. Well, Jerry, we explained earlier on in the budget process that we yeah. currently are contracting out those services. All right. That's why I went to zero. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, library services, one, staff. I'm, I'm, I was just trying to see where the 30 are, that's all, I'm just, and. You have one support staff, right? Yeah. Uh, one part-time treasurer, does that count as a staff? No. No. Um, uh, three part to full time in the office of the superintendent, not including senior management there. Right. Um, 15, 16, uh, 19, and two in the uh, office of the principal. It's 21. And then uh, five in um, um, office of the um, uh, the operation of the buildings. No staff. And, you know, all those are, are people we're talking about getting lower pay raises, and generally they're starting lower anyway. Uh, I haven't talked about the the rest of the senior team. Um, we have a superintendent, uh, business administrator, um, assume that's like a director of finance that may participate a lot in evening meetings, uh, doing a great job. Um, technology coordinator, we've talked about. <laughs> a director of pupil services, do I know what that is? That's the director and all the other areas, right? Pupil services, <laughs> but it's yeah. primarily your special ed director. So special ed director. It's a special. We we'll call director. it different names in different districts. Okay, and where does that go in the budget? Uh, her salary is under the SAU staff, even though she's not physically located here. So it's under the office of the superintendent. Yeah, because that's where it normally falls. Okay. It's a district-wide position. And then the principal and the assistant principal. So that kind of gets us up to about 32. Um, I don't think I have any other any other questions to try to understand um, this myself. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, um, you know, or, or has any comments about, about the level of uh, staffing of any of these functions. Um, you know, obviously, we're, we're heavily payroll dependent David, did you say the budget, budget, but um, that's it. Um, was that Tucker, go ahead. 
Yeah, I was just I was saying, did you say director of pupil services is uh, director of special ed? Is that correct? Yeah, it's the same. Some districts call it special ed director, some call it pupil services director. And they are managing the uh, IEPs and that or? And a lot more. What are they, what is <laughs> yeah. the, they they oversee the IEPs. They uh, man and, and help manage them, and then they oversee uh, any other services students may need, such as five hundred four. Uh, you know, any ADA issues or concerns that come up. And that's different than the partner program. Well, she over, she looks at the partner program too. She goes to those meetings and she watches out for those kids too. Because the partner program is special ed, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. She oversees basically all the parents too, correct? Lost you, John. No, that was me. That was Joe. I was asking. I, I believe she oversees yep. the parents too, doesn't she? Yes. Well, she oversees all, yeah, all of the special ed staff. Yeah, the whole program. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. All of special ed, which encompasses the partner program as well. Do we have any consultants or anybody She's else? She's busy. Well, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were uh, done with that question. Do we have any consultants or people uh, in our system that are non-employees? Any consulting services? Well, I saw three, three other, the, the nurse, well, of course, the occupational therapy. Yeah, so all of those. So like services. Yeah. Um, which are also kind of special ed stuff. Yeah. The uh, psychologist, the OT, PT, all of that stuff. She'll negotiate any of those contracts. Yeah. And she, and get and fills that. those needs. Correct. Oversees those needs. And there's there's no other um, consultants. Oh, so they have miscellaneous payroll. They list the uh, small engine teacher. They list the nurse and um, at ESOL, I think. It was yeah, the ESOL, that was just a breakdown of that teacher. Um, oh. Yeah, and just because the, we have a the, the small engine teacher, he's not part of the union. He's, he's part-time. He's not right. part of the union. He's, um, it's only a couple blocks a day. And the nurse will... Yeah, we used to contract that. We had a nurse, we contracted that out. Now we have in house nurse again. So now, do we have somebody- part that, of the union. Do we have somebody that just does the, uh, like the Medicaid uh, billing issue? Where, where is that person? Don't we have someone that does that bi billing? Uh, no, we don't have any, any staff on the inside. They, each one takes care of their own records and um, passes them on to the SAU. And the special okay. ed director oversees that. All right. Because I think at one time, didn't we, we had a staff person that uh, took care of all the... No, everyone's always taking care of their own. Okay. And then and they, yeah, we go through um, um, an agency that, that um, works on that. And how much does that agency cost us? So that's in the budget. It's uh, yeah, yeah it's like nine percent of the actual um, nine revenue. Nine percent of the revenue that we actually receive. And there's no way we can do that in house. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there are, you you would need at least a full time person, if not more. <laughs> a lot of regulations. And who does the grant writing? We do. Okay. Have you developed anything in support of gifted students over the last several years since the last debacle on that? Uh what we have done in the past for the for the younger grades is we've had summer little summer um, 
activities uh, for you know three weeks or so at a time um, where they've gone into the technology enrichment. Um, depending on the interests of the students and the interests of the uh, and the availability of the teachers. And they did have the the elementary school was doing some. You're, uh, you're not on the same page with me. When I say gifted, I mean gifted. My kid went through that school and was out of there at seven years old because she was ready to graduate high school. The school did nothing for her. I'm very concerned about future kids that that come through that have true gifts and just are totally ignored. I pulled my kid out of that school because I walked in there and found her in a chair in the hallway and having been given a computer and just told to do whatever she wanted kind of thing. She turned 16 a couple of weeks ago and she's in a master's program today. You guys, what are you doing for gifted kids? Not a kid that wants to take an extra class or something. I mean, someone seriously with capabilities. The school failed my kid incredibly. So I'm very concerned about other kids. I have the means to be able to take it. I pulled her out and did my thing with her and she's doing great. But there's a lot of people that don't have that capability. What we have done with some students is um, we've, we've, they've gone to through the classes, what, what they are capable of doing, what level they're capable of working at. Um, they attend classes at that level. That That's not in. true because when my daughter was there, she was told that she couldn't attend higher classes because she wasn't old enough to comprehend the material that was being done. And that's your current guidance counselor that came up with that brilliant stuff. Okay. Well, I, you know, you asked me what we're doing now. You're not we, doing we have, it. We have, we have mm -hmm. had students who are at a high level, perform at a high level, and who have been placed in high level classes based on their performance level. Can I jump in here real quick? Sure. I just, number one, I'm not sure what what is out there for programs and stuff to address something like that. that but as a budget committee, I really don't think we should be singling out guidance counselors, teachers, and stuff like that. Can we just keep it at, I don't know what programs are out there that you're talking about, Robert. Are there actual programs that test kids like that? I'm not familiar, but as a budget committee, maybe we can find a number somewhere and add it to a budget for something like that. I am not sure what's out there. I'm not sure what, in what, what I'm talking about is looking at the kids needs when you're talking about special needs kids it's not only kids that are having troubles it's some kids excel and that's a special needs kid too and when no, the that's school what goes and that's takes what I'm a saying. special yeah can they take that's what I'm saying is there something out there that I mean I'm not I'm not the person to say that but as a budget committee what we're doing here right now Maybe That's they can come up with something funding, that we we're talking add about into funding the budget these or... programs. Yes, exactly. I just don't, I think we're getting away from it a little bit when we're actually attacking the actual people that are running these programs. Let's just stick to the programs for right now. I get what you're saying, but we're here to come up with a solution. Yeah, well, can, can they take a college course? I mean, do, can they go to PSU and? Yeah. Uh, we've they, had kids do that. They do running start. They yeah. can take college courses. They can take courses online to 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 meet their needs. What's called running what? Running running start. It's um, the kids can get college credit um, if our. I mean, a teacher has to I think have a master's degree right. and has to sign up with a college, and they can take a class in high school, say like a biology class or whatever, and get college credits, as long as the college accepts that. But it's a run, it's called Running Start. It's in a program in New Hampshire. And uh, I mean, I, I, it, it just seems like that's not something a lot of our students are taking advantage of because I haven't really seen it pop out on the budget. Is that? I mean, it's just part of the regular, the teacher teaches it and then the kid can get credits for it. Yeah. They just have to do the paperwork. It's not an extra cost. Oh, but it, you, don't, it does, you, don't to, you don't have to pay tuition to send to get a class uh, at PSU? No, it might be minimal and I, and the students might pay for that because again, well, we might split the cost. I, I don't think, so. I'd have to check with guidance. I haven't seen, but um, you know, unless they're free and reduced, they might be able to get some money towards it. But um, 
yeah, we've had a lot of kids that graduate their senior year and they go off to college and they've already got a semester's worth of credits because of running start or AP courses or whatever. And, and running start, is that with one specific college or is that with all I'm, colleges? I'm, is I that know it's with a, a lot of the community colleges in right. New Hampshire. Um, I'm trying to think back because my kids didn't go to school in New Hampshire. They ended up going out of state for college, but I know uh, my kids took some running start and some colleges accepted them from out of state, some didn't. But I think it's mainly with the in-state New Hampshire colleges. So his tuition is $150 per course and get a, an affordable jump start to a college degree and career skills is what uh, this website says. Um, must be true, it's on the internet. <laughs> a college class for 150 bucks, really? <laughs> it says. It's called the Running Start Program. It, it, it's college credit. They tried to talk my yeah. kid into it and he said, yeah. no way. Yeah. Because it, it does require extra work in the classroom. Um, I didn't remember the program, but I remember them talking about it. Yeah, basically the, they the do teacher, talk to it about it. Yeah. I think the teacher that's teaching it has a syllabus that's uh, approved by the colleges so they can get those credits, you know, so they work, the high schools work with the colleges to get those approved so the kids can get those college credits. So is this similar to a CLEP test program or something? Um, yeah, I don't know. Do they still have the CLEP? Because I know with foreign language, that used to be the foreign la language CLEP. They could get foreign language credits mm -hmm. when they took the CLEP test, kind of like AP courses, yeah. but it was specifically for foreign language and they could, you know, get college credits for that. And there's something called the Governor STEM Scholarship Program. Or is that anything anybody's taken advantage of? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. We might, but I'm not, I haven't heard that one. And Robert, this is Joe. I just want to be perfectly clear. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with you. I just thought maybe that you knew if there was something. Well, I'm going to tell you. Oh, I was saying, is there Joe, something out saying, there? My, Joe, my concern is that when, when I was dealing with it, there was nothing. And I'm hoping to see that there is something because you know, there's, there's yeah, a that's, lot of that's what I was asking. Do you know if there's something? I guess that's what I was asking. And I'm asking you that from a board member's perspective, because I'd like to pursue yeah. it. I honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm uneducated in that, in that field. So I would like to know, is there something actually out there? Well, there the first like the IQ test or something like that for, for... go ahead. Well, um, from my perspective, I gotta tell you, let me tell you my first experience with it because it was my oldest child, you know, my first child. So, you know, to me, whatever she was doing was totally normal because I had no other kids at the time. So I figured all kids were th working just like her. Okay. And they had the, the uh, invention convention class. Are you guys, I think yeah. everybody's familiar. Uh, I'm, fr with I'm familiar. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So my daughter decided she wanted to create a board game. So she went and learned how to use Visio software and laid out a board game. And she physically created an entire board game, just like if you opened a Monopoly game from the store, she had everything done. She invented this entire game. And so this is my first experience. She's doing this at the invention convention and she was accused of not doing it herself because it turns out that most five years old don't have the ability to do that and learn how to I use see. software packages and everything. So my first experience- I, I, I can certainly understand your, your frustration. I understand your frustration completely. Yeah. So I was like launched into this thing and I went to the school and I said, what do you do with this? And I was going back and forth and getting nowhere. And one day I went in to, to speak with specifically the guidance counselor. And yeah. I literally found my kid in a chair in the hallway. And you got to understand that that's when you know you learn that your kid is being ostracized because she's too too smart, and and other kids are thinking, oh, she must be in trouble. She's out in the hallway in a chair. 
the whole experience went downhill from there. And if nobody's recognizing, you know, when these kids have these abilities and nobody's got any program set up to be able to do anything for them, this is, this is equally as bad as if there's somebody that needs help in the, in the learning areas. It's, you know, but they're, they're figured, oh, they're smart. That's their problem. Don't, don't worry about them. And they just get shunted to the side. In fact, I went to the state in the board of education and dealt with them. And I had to bring in lawyers because I had to get her graduated from high school. And there's a state law saying you can't get graduated until you're 16. Well, I proved that one wrong too, because you can't go to college unless you have the appropriate stuff, unless you want to bank credits, if the college will accept you. No, so there's a far- no, no, no. I guess my, really my whole point was, I, yeah. I, do, I do understand exactly your situation. I do understand what your daughter went through. My comprehension is from a budget committee and board member, what can we do to fix that if there's not something in place? And that's not a discussion for tonight, but that's- Well, actually, the an there is an answer to mind. that. You've got your state testing, which ends up taking a year to get back to everybody that you know gets it. But um, it, it yep. can, you can quickly recognize the, you know, where kids are at. And when you get a second grader that's tested out of high school, you know well yes yeah. so, and if we and if we have that in place and that did happen then obviously somebody failed your kid and that's nobody will deny that yeah but well, i but i was no, just wondering if there was if there was something else in place or could, that could be put in place to immediately recognize that talent that, that that's well, my point i'm gonna say that i don't know that that's what's got to happen at the administrative level. If, but the thing is, the administration doesn't care because the state's not measuring them on that. And the administration is concerned with what the state measures. And that's the focus. But we have- Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say they don't, they don't care, but maybe that's something that's not recognized as it should be. Yeah, I would say I, I strongly disagree that they don't care, but I think you're bringing up- uh... Uh, first of all, congratulations on uh, on having uh, such a talented child. Boy, uh, that's really fantastic. Uh, you know, we would all hope for as much for our 16-year-old. And um, I know how much we all worry about uh, how our kids are being handled and uh, treated, whether they're, you know, having problems or, or um or not being recognized uh, for what they can do. So I, um, I, uh, uh, I both, you know, uh, kind of celebrate what you have, and I totally feel for what you have. It, I would say, you know, looking at the budget, it does appear the budget, um, uh, you know, is is kind of weighted towards helping those that have special needs, special problems bringing those that are, um, um, you know, maybe have to work a little harder to get up to uh, standard reach that than in providing opportunity uh, for what, what I've heard in other school systems called the talented and gifted programs uh, to help, you know, do something to help them achieve their full potential. Um, and, um, that's just what it looks like in, you know, from a budget standpoint. Um, that doesn't mean that's what the attitude of the school or anything else is. Um, um, but, um, uh, you know, I was neither talented or gifted. Certainly wasn't both. So I wouldn't, uh, that wasn't uh, anything I could do. So, um, uh, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what, um, what we can do he, here. You know, just thinking out loud to um, kind of infuse a little bit of of um, of that culture into the kind of overall mission of the school system, and and whether there's something in the budget that can do that. Um, it does look like there's some programs that are incredibly cheap, but you know, maybe not directed. For somebody of the enormous uh, uh, aptitude and talent that your daughter has is kind of somebody who's, who's uh, 
just kind of growing out of the school system uh, a little ahead of their time and maybe is, uh, has got some ambition um, with the things like the STEM program and, and Running Start and so on. So, because um, uh, she certainly sounds like she was off the charts. So anyway, thanks for sharing that. I, I, I don't know exactly what to do with it, but um, well, the thing is, I, if I, I do think there's an issue there. And nobody's looking for it. Then you've got some really sharp kids that are bored to death that end up going down that road of, you know, sex, drugs, and alcohol because there's there's nothing keeping their minds busy and they're just like, well, what the hell am I doing here? And if nobody's looking for it, or if everybody just ignores it because that's an easy kid, that kid's going to get an A. Who cares? You know, they're then then it's really doing a disservice to those kids. Can we ask administration um, to come up with some ideas? I mean, what, what do other schools do to meet the need of the gifted? I remember the day when we thought we were doing great shakes and we put $600 in the budget for the gifted kids so they could go to um, some sort of a conference. And that was what we did, $600 we gave them. And I think, you know, all along, a lot of us have thought that that was way too little um, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna give him some slack on this one, Bonnie, because I went to the state level. The state has a phone number, yeah, to call the Department of Education for gifted students, but nobody answers it. There's no answering machine on it, and it's not, uh, it's not covered financially either. There's, there is no support at the state level, and no public school that I was able to that I investigated had any okay. any offerings of any kind. And it's very disturbing to see that because there's there's got to be so many kids out there in different circumstances that just don't get to reach their potential. What is she getting a I think it's something. I, I think it's something that should be. I think it's something that should be explored. I think it's something that we should put on a agenda list for things to be looked at. Uh, because I think also we lose those kids to our from our community. Uh, we lose them to Holderness and Phillips Exeter, uh, whether they are, you know, they're not going to be as gifted as, as Robert's daughter, but they are gifted and they are talented. And I don't think we want to lose those students. I think that's what's important. I think we do need to go down the avenue of, of you know, the school looking towards that. I don't know if we have that right now, but I think it's a great thing to put forward. Um, and I think it's something that the, the whether it's the budget committee um, or it's the uh, school board, you know, I think it's more of a school board pushing to push that. Uh, and then it comes around the next time we look at a budget. Uh, unfortunately, it's not there, um, but it definitely needs to be looked at because I think, we're, like I said, I believe we're losing kids. I, I can think of one off the top of my head that went to Phillips Exeter that was fairly gifted as far as I could tell. So. And the thing is when these gifted kids get, you know, just shunted into the side, it has damaging effects on them. And and I'm thinking nowadays you can't get away with, um, back in the day, you really had three levels of, of, of high school classes. You had, you had the academic, you had the business, and you had the general. We don't have that system anymore, do we? And at least then you had maybe five or six kids that were uh, academically uh, ahead of um, you know the average um, and uh, that was a help at least but I don't think I think I don't think you can categorize a, a kids like that anymore and you probably have to teach for the average child I mean a teacher has to uh, present the lesson probably so that the average student you know can can grasp it and you know and so that's a, a it's sort of a double whammy for the the very a talented uh, child in in the course, you know that um, unless they get an awful lot of extra um, work, and and why why do a lot of extra work? Perhaps might be their attitude, but that was a better system when it was like that. You you had the top academically kids in the chemistry class or the biology class or whatever and you could the teacher could go much further 
with those uh, children. Um, and that system isn't the way it is anymore, right? No, we, we do have, we have AP. Oh, sorry. You can... Yeah, we do have chemistry, we have physics, and we have AP classes as well, and science, math. And you but might have two, two classes of bio, one, one level and one the other level. Mm -hmm. With an honors with, level and, an, and a, another level. What about what about at the middle school and the elementary school? Are they classified into different uh, abilities, or are they just lumped into different sums? Or no, they taught they they are involved with with activities that um, meet their needs. So some kids would be involved in activities that would be need higher level thinking skills, and those are the ones that will do projects like that. Um, you know, you you have challenges and projects that go on throughout the throughout the school K through 12. Um, have, have the girls, the uh, English department has a, a great high school program where they have um, speech contest and then they have the poetry out loud. And uh, that brings out a lot of strengths in, in students and that challenges a lot of kids. So that, that's just an yeah. example. I, I know that, but are they leveled or are they all in the same classroom? So if I'm, if I'm teaching one class with four kids who are really struggling, as you said last meeting, that they're only, I'm a fifth grade teacher and they're only at a second grade level. I don't have time for that kid that's at the fifth grade or the sixth grade level if he's in the same classroom. Are they all in the same classroom being taught? Or are yeah, they- they have differentiated instruction. So each child is instructed at their own level. So you have group group lessons and, and um, you know, and group activities where students are placed in their own level and then they, they work with that level. There are also groups within the classroom that are, are multi-level so that the students experience working with kids that are not at, just at their level, they're all different levels. So there's different activities to meet the needs of the students within a classroom. Uh, it, again, I guess I, I, we're at the point we're getting close. Are there any other questions um, or anything anybody wants to bring up tonight? Uh, I, I will say we got some nice uh, comments uh, from, um, I think they're for, all from Heather Krill, but they're from um, um, observers in the meeting. I want to thank, uh, thank um, anybody who first participated, but, uh, but also uh, Heather for, for the comments that you submitted. Um, appreciate that. Um, let me see if I had any other topics. I don't think so. Oh, did, did we get the um, final um, inventory on the graphic arts cameras? That's on our old minutes. That was going to be looked at. You know, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think we sent that to you. No, we didn't give you that information. We did get it. I'll have to. I'll have to get that and send it to you. Sorry about that. It's the graphic cameras. All right. Um, I think we're. I don't know if again if there's other things. I know we're gonna we're gonna discuss the fields a little bit more next week. Uh, as we get some numbers put to us, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but I think that we have to start getting down to numbers now. Uh, yeah. I think if, if we uh, come back to the to our next meeting with ideas to discuss actual numbers, um, whether it's line item or overall, uh, with and if and then again start looking at those numbers to make sure that we have enough information to feel that we're making the best decision for the budget uh, monetarily. I think, I don't know if anybody else has anything else or feels differently on that, but I think we're at the point where we need to start compiling numbers together to make our final approval here. And I think one thing um, I'm still wondering about is the trust funds. And um, do you know, let's just say, you know, we go along with our usual way of doing things, $100,000, 50% for that and 10 for that and 10 for the other, 10,000 here and there. And like we've always done, um, I guess, you know, I, I'd like to have a little discussion about whether that's the best way to do it or not. 
and I think it goes back to us needing the capital improvement uh, plan. But I'm wondering if the if the staff, the administration knows that, okay, we're going to put ten thousand in the uh, technology, and we know we're going to withdraw eight thousand from it. You know, do you have any uh, plans for those trust funds uh, that you're going to withdraw money? from those trust funds um, this particular year? I, th I think that could be, you know, 20 to 30 minute discussion. Right. We were given uh, the trust, you know, we have trust uh, fund balances totaling, um, looks like about 460 something thousand dollars. Right. Talked about right. putting another 100,000 in this year. Uh, is one of the, I think that that's a uh, separate Warren article. Is that right, Debbie? Debbie? Right. And, um, uh, but I, I don't think we have uh, um, received any information about what might be withdrawn from those this year, if I'm not. And uh, it, you know, it might make sense, you know, just part of our due diligence to go through each of those trust funds and where they are and, and um, what we're saving the money for. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's kind of like my point. Maybe we've got enough in there already if we're not really have any plans along any of these lines. Uh, maybe we've got enough not knowing what we're, what we're going to need or that we're going to take any out. Deb, can you, can you do both? Can you do the trust fund and capital improvement or does it have to be one or the other? You're muted. You, yeah, you could do both. As I explained at the last school board meeting, they're basically the same thing. Um, they're both. Yeah, I, I recall the, that. I yeah, do, I the only difference know. between you the can. two, okay. I mean, they're both designated for a specific purpose. Um, the only difference between the two is you have to have a public hearing to take the money out of the trust funds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can have both because we're looking at moving the special ed um, trust fund to a capital reserve just because of the confidentiality and any yeah. time they have to spend money from it, they'd have to have a public hearing. Um, now, if it was a capital improvement, say you put money in for like just a truck down the road, mm -hmm. that money has to go towards that truck period. It can't be used for something else. Is that how it works? Yeah. Like we have a, we have a bus or vehicle trust fund. So that's what that, and we have a facilities trust fund. We have equipment trust fund. Yeah, but, uh, you, but can get, you could get more specific. Yes, you could say we want a roof trust fund, a roof. Um, That's what I was asking. Um, okay. A boiler trust fund. I get so you can get okay. more specific. Yes, we have a technology yeah. trust fund. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have been contacted about a very specific item. And that item is petty cash. There are, it's been voiced to me that there's some questions about how much is in petty cash, how does the money get there, and how does it get dispersed? Oh, I didn't write that down. Can we answer that tonight? Yeah, we did have a discussion about I'm that. I'm not really sure what you're talking about. If you're talking about the student activities accounts that are held in the high school principal's office, that's what, what, that's what those accounts are. Those don't have anything to do with this budget. We have Does your administrative office have a petty cash? We don't, no. We have no petty cash? No. Nope. Everything runs through our general fund cash account. So what is petty cash in the school? I'm well, they, they have student activities accounts in the main office. Those, that's what we would consider petty cash. So that's dealing with separate, like separate. Things like that. Is that what it is like dealing with ticket sales and things like that? Yeah, for the classes or the clubs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so it looks like trust funds we want to put on for the next time around. Um, can you send me again the questions? are sent through me. So if you guys can all send them um, Sunday, I'll send them out Sunday night and we should hopefully get a Monday yeah. answers to our questions so we can look over them for Tuesday. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like you have, I'll add those questions or can Bonnie find, uh, refine the questions you have about the trust funds? Sure, sure. And I don't think I have to add, add the questions on the tree service and the uh, fields because we've already requested that. So again, um, just send me the questions Sunday night. I will send them along and we'll get our answers again from anything that you got. Uh, Jerry, I actually took better notes tonight. So if you have any questions, send me a message. Uh, I just I just thought of one thing. We have a second union now. Has has that union come up with anything, or do we have any demands from that union, or, or do we have a second union now to to deal with? Next year. Okay, that doesn't come into play until next year. Okay. All right. Does anybody have anything else? Should we call it a night? <clears throat> Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll second it. Oh, sorry, Again. I was muted. I was going to say we're scheduled for the 26th. Um, uh, and um, I assume we're going to be meeting the Tuesday after that. The second is yep. when we're going to be finalizing. Um, uh what we're we're presenting to the board is on the third is that right is that that's what that's what i thought that's why i'm saying we're trying that's how i felt and that's why i was saying we tried to get some numbers here yeah, Jerry, uh, just a clarification of the schedule i mean i know you guys have a meeting on the second the yeah. budget hearing we had talked about the budget hearing is when you present the budget on right. the 10th oh the, oh the third is when we provide it to the school board well and then the, the third, third is, is the, public the third hearing. they have a bond hearing on uh -huh. that one warren article on the 10th mm -hmm. is the budget hearing when you present your budget to okay. everyone, including the school board. Okay. So before the 10th, you would have to come up with your changes so that we could. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we, that's what we had said. We need you know some time to pull once you have your budget because we have to prepare the reports for the budget hearing. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had something written down about the 5th for some reason I had that we'd get that to you by that day, but I guess not. The 5th is fine too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think now are we going to assume we're going to need Thursday next week? How's everybody feel? Uh, I think we should see where we are. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm happy to meet if, um, if we have if we have work to do. Yeah, I, th I think too, if, if we want to, and I guess we can go through me, send any preliminary thoughts that you have about um, changes that you want to make. Um, maybe we could just to start, I can start compiling all in one area maybe um, so that you can send that along with your questions. You're more than welcome to do that just so that we start, maybe I can do a compilation for us all to see for next week so that uh, that can start that discussion. Does that make sense? I think if we do that, we, we better make sure we're just given a list of our opinion and yep. make sure that we don't uh, chit chat back and forth among ourselves via email. Like I say, I want to cut and you will say you want to cut. I mean, just boilerplate, provide the list. And, and if we all agree to, to not comment on it, um, you know, I'm saying so that we're so that it's perceived that we're doing a lot of business via email and we've been so good about that i can honestly say to the to anybody that asks that we have not we haven't um done a lot of chit chatting among ourselves outside a meeting that would be my only caveat to that if if i mean i don't mind giving my opinions and, and Tucker compiling them, all the opinions, um, and he might see some commonalities there. You know what I'm saying? I'm just want, uh, wanting us all that it, it could be fraught with a. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's a, you know, I think that's a, you know, great thought is that we, we shouldn't be talking amongst or no. even outside, outside of the committee. 
Um, but I think the I think we need to start. And again, it's just preliminary. It's not definite. I think just everybody's thoughts. Um, I think that's important um, so that we can start getting some numbers so that we can put it all in one area to be presented because um, we've got to get it. We've got to start getting it done. Yes. Does administration see any problems with us supplying a list of our thoughts, supplying it to Tucker so long as we don't hash it over? Just a list. Do you so you're going to send a list to the SAU and then we'll send it to Tucker? What do, you, what do you think? You know, I just don't want us to taint the wonderful hard work we're doing by somebody criticizing us and saying, well, we went there to meetings and we talked about things and didn't really express opinions on them. And oh boy, they sure did. <laughs> In an email to in an email to anybody, be it sent to the. the do you know what I'm saying? Uh, is anybody else a little sensitive about this, or not? Well, I'm. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people. I mean, it's about people's livelihoods. It's about people's children. Um, you know, we're all here as as public servants. You know, we're, we're trying to straddle um, uh, the needs of, of taxpayers uh, to see, see uh, when, when they make a contribution that it's being done uh, efficiency, efficiently and for a good purpose and, um, and to serve our kids. So, you know, we're trying to do both. It's not, I don't you know, obviously people are, are not going to agree with everything that everybody says on here. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, that it's, um, you know, it's, it's not as joyous an activity as doing rotary where everybody's really pleased to see when we show up. So, um, but it's another another aspect of public service. It doesn't. I think it goes with the territory. I'm not happy about it, but um, but and, you know, we it, somebody has to do it. We're asking we're asking people to give up, put a lot of money up. You know, for maybe and for especially for people, this is their only property. Um, you know, it's a lot to ask. So. So. Yeah, I don't mind stating my opinion. I, I'm, I'm not afraid of a thing. I'll state it. Uh, you know, that's just me. Oh, and, I'll tell and you Bonnie, I I... what I think, but I just don't want anyone because I know we are not doing it. Think that that we are afraid to say it in the meeting. So boy, we're saying it in emails. You know what I'm oh, saying? I see. Well, oh, I see. That's, what that's I, my I, point. I, that's my well, point. I, I guess everything, everything, and that's why I say just preliminary numbers that you're thinking about. Um, and that's, it's going to be presented. I'm going to show it. I'm not going, it's going to be shared. And that's when the opinion should come out is when we all start talking again. Does that make sense? I mean, it's, I agree with you. It doesn't, doesn't need to be, no, just send, send some numbers that you're thinking about uh, is my thought. Cause we need to start putting it in all in one area. Okay, so I get, I get you. I mean, do you, does anybody see a problem with that, or is it? Emails are discoverable. They are, yeah. you know. Seriously, you know. I think you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just warning us all that we probably are not going to make everybody happy uh, with what's on our minds, and we have to do our job, and and some of it's going to be controversial. And, 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 fr and fr frankly, we're going to have some bad, bad ideas and, yep. and a good idea starts with a bad idea and people have to have the freedom to talk and say what they're thinking. And then, you know, somebody can add something to it or do something different and, or we just walk away from it. So, and, and I don't think having, having a bad suggestion, it, anybody should be criticized for that. So, um, okay. All right, then 
So we're, we're, are we okay with sending all your bad suggestions to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not label them all bad. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I'm just saying it because I just, That's, I don't want to taint our good work and I, and I, I think it's, I think it needed to be said. And I think that uh, this is a very professional group. And I think if they can just, again, I'm just, it'll all be public when we meet on the next Zoom meeting. So um, again, if it's, if it's bothersome, we can throw the numbers out when we get together next time. Um, you, you know, I, I don't know, is, is anybody else as sensitive as I am about this? I mean, my preference is just to say it in a meeting. My gosh, we need that second. Uh, we need that uh, Thursday. We need we need the meeting to say it. Um, we need the meeting to say it, and not um, just um, put it in an email and send it to whoever is going to tally up. Uh, well, it, I I just thought it'd be. Like, it's almost I, like voting. I I I I'm probably belaboring this a little too much, but. No, well, uh, I'm Let me tell you, Bonnie, I was just I was just going to put it again in one location so everybody knew what people you know were thinking to have that discussion. This is not to actually this is not by any way final or anything. But yeah. if we if we want to just go ahead and say it instead, you know, say hey, okay, here we go. Let's take 2120 and cut out 40,000 or something like that. We can do that too. Mm -hmm. Well, the obvious solution is on Monday, everybody bring their list. We say it out loud so it can yep. be recorded and we yeah. make it there and then we hash it out. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So that's yeah. fine. Send me your questions. Um, and uh, again, there was a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. So meetings adjourn. Send me your questions and I'll send them off to Judith and Deb. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for those that attended from outside. Good night. Thank you. Hey, did we want to give anybody the chance from the outside to say anything? I don't. I don't mind doing that. Well, we just had a either. motion to adjourn. We just yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 didn't vote on that motion. Well, let's 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 that let's uh, try to let that happen next time. Robert, they've they've been saying stuff on the chat, so yeah, I've seen that, but I thought you know maybe we might next. Well, how about next time we open it up? You know, at the next end. Next time, yeah. Well, it wasn't voted on technically because I was the only one that said I, so it has. Uh, really been voted on. I, I said, said I it. also. By the way, I was with you. Um, but I think we can actually leave that for the next time, and then maybe they also can have some stuff to think about if they want to come back and talk to us. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Everybody. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.